I promise this video will be much shorter than the other ones. Last video, we had a look at transformations and we were introduced to the idea of amplitude and period. And the summary is here for you here, where I finish off by saying that if you've got this form of the um, sine, cosine, tan function, then A would um, impact the amplitude and B would impact the period. So given a function without graphing, how do we determine what the amplitude and period is? And that's what we're gonna do. So looking down at slide 19, I might actually zoom up. At slide 19, I've given three functions here and you're asked to work out the amplitude. It's really quite straightforward. Um, you look at the number for A, which is in this case two, and that's the amplitude. So in your head, you should be able to imagine that that graph is stretching out so the maximum minimum value is two and negative two. For negative three sine three, the amplitude, can you get ahead of me, what is it? Did you say negative three? If you did, you're wrong because the negative part is the reflection. The dilation is three, the amplitude is three, okay? Third one, negative cos x over two. I deliberately chose this one because it's not necessarily straightforward to see what that means. That is the same as negative cos, negative a half cos x. Okay, so dividing by two is the same as multiplying by a half. So if I've divided cos x by two, it's the same as a half times. Again, what is the amplitude now? Can you see it? I hope you said it was a half and not negative a half. That's it for amplitude. That's basically all you have to do for working that out. Um, the idea really is that without Desmos, you need to know this. If you were asked to graph it, then if I said graph y equals two cos x, the first thing you have to do is say, well, I know how to draw the shape, but what is the maximum minimum gonna be? So to do that, you need to work out what the amplitude is. Okay, let's go over to period. Now, I'm gonna, I'll give it to you first and then I'll come back and explain why. For working out the period of a sine and cosine, what we do is we start with two pi because that's the overall period of the base function, but then we're gonna be cutting it up, um, either stretching it out or cutting it up, I suppose. And so it's gonna be affected by B. Okay, so we divide two pi by B. Um, if it's tan, well, its base period is pi, so we're gonna go start with pi and we're gonna divide that by B, okay? So the answer's here. Maybe you could just go ahead of me if you want to, but um, uh, pause the video and try these out and then come back to it. So the answer for this one is uh, y equals tan 3x. The period would be pi, because that's the base period, divided by three. Okay, so that means that that would be my new single cycle of the tan graph. So if I was drawing it, I'd have to make sure that one, rotate, one cycle would fit in pi three. Now what happens if you've got x on five? Well, first thing I want to do is I want to, um, again, like we did in the previous example, is to remind you that x divided by five is the same as one fifth of x. That's the first thing. The second thing is that the period is a little bit more tricky to work out in a way. It's two pi divided by fifth. So it's okay to have a fraction over a fraction like that. But please remember that means two pi multiplied, uh, sorry, divided by, divided by one fifth, and I can put two pi over one. So that's gonna be two pi times five over one. So that's 10 pi. So the new period, it's stretched out. The sine graph will go over a period of 10 pi before it starts repeating. So that's how to do that. One last example, then I'll leave you to it. In this instance, the period, the value of B, sorry, has a pi in it. And it does interesting things to the actual period. So let's have a go. Period is equal to two pi, that's the base period, over the new value pi on six. So that's two pi multiplied by six on pi. I'll put this over one now. So you can see I've just done the division and, and, and flip in one action. Dividing by pi on six is the same as timesing by the reverse. So I'm going to be um, canceling out the pi's here and I end up with a value of 12. So the period is a whole number instead of a radian measure with pi in it. That's still okay, it's still a radian um, uh, input, but now the period is over a length of 12. So when you see something like pi on six as the, um, as the value of B, what we end up with is a period over a whole number value like 12. So for example, if we were looking at tides over a 12 hour period, um, we might be able to see then that the tides go up in and out over 12 hours. 
not 12 pi hours or whatever else. So it's a way of changing the, um, the scale to, in this instance, a time scale over hours. So just be mindful of that. It's a, it's a, uh, a way that, that the value of B can allow us to create a graph which works over um, a different scale other than scales that involve pi. I promise I'll keep this short, so that will do for today.